Hi, my name is Dong Su Park, and I'm going to talk about CubeSpawn, a tool to management, uh, tool to manage Kubernetes cluster on Linux host. I work at Kinfolk. I recently joined Kinfolk, and we are a team uh, building Linux foundational technologies. CubeSpawn is a tool to manage multi-node Kubernetes cluster on Linux host. So you can create Kubernetes cluster in an efficient way uh, on your laptop or on your local host. Um, anywhere you want, uh, if you have installed recent Linux distros. And this project is completely based on open source projects, for example, um, for bootstrapping uh, each node, uh, we make use of kube ADM, which is a command line tool to boot bootstrap a master node and al uh, to allow uh, worker nodes to join the master node uh, very uh, fast and efficiently. And to launch each node, we make use of systemd and spawn, which is a core building block for running um, Linux containers. So this is also used in Rocket or any other container runtimes, but uh, we just uh, launch systemd and spawn directly from the host. And for each instance, uh, for uh, as a building uh, base image for each instance, we use Core's container Linux, uh, which is a very minimal Linux uh, operating dist system distros. So maybe you can see uh, the usage uh, on other cloud providers, but uh, yeah, we can, uh, we just uh, download the image and uh, use this as a base of the container. Uh, for running kubespawn, uh, you maybe need to have in, uh, systemd installed, actually version 233, which is a little new, newer than the most distros, but fortunately recently Fedora 26 and Ubuntu 17.10 include the, the version, the newest version, so you, you can just uh, use these distros. And QSPON also relies on Kubernetes 1.7 or newer. Uh, 1.8 is actually the most recent version and we also support that. Also, you need to install these uh, utilities, for example, Camo image or ButterFS Prox, Ellipse SE Linux utils, which is needed for uh, ensuring requirements and bootstrapping. Uh, and the most uh, important features of CubeSpawn is actually we um, heavily make use of systemd, so uh, systemd and spawn and machinedd. And spawn is, uh, of course, used as a launching containers, and machinedd is used as a sto uh, managing storage pool under varlib uh, kubespawn uh, directory on your host. And we support multiple container runtimes, so not only Docker, but also Rocket, and maybe in the future we would also support the CRIO. Maybe you would um, think about other related similar projects, for example, Minikube or KOps, but Minikube uh, is a little different that it launches a, a single virtual machine, uh, whereas CubeSpawn uh, launches containers, so no virtual machine. Cube, uh, Cube also works on a single node, but um, systemd, uh, um, uh, CubeSpawn actually, in theory, uh, can run multiple instances up to dozens of nodes. KOps is actually uh, just a tool that works on cloud providers, for example, AWS or Azure. So uh, it's a little different from uh, uh, CubeSpawn because CubeSpawn um, just runs on your local host. 
So uh, as an, just a simple overview, uh, I would uh, express this example. You want to launch uh, three node clusters. One node is a master, and the other two nodes are uh, worker nodes. So if you run kubeflow with a num uh, node number three, then you can just uh, run systemd and spawn uh, three times. So node zero as a master node, and node one and two as workers. And then on the master node, kube uh, adm init command will run to uh, launch the kubeless and um, the required uh, container one times uh, automatically. Then the pause, Kubernetes pause uh, that you want to run will just uh, run automatically. And on the uh, other nodes, for example, worker uh, node one, uh, kube adm join command will run, then the node one uh, will be automatically be joined to node zero. Uh, with the help of uh, automatically generated token. This is just done by kube ADM. And yeah, these pods are uh, just uh, simply visible from your host. So I'm going to do a demo. Maybe it can take some time, so I need to start the demo right now. So for example, I created a shell script here is create and start. For example, create runs simply cube spawn with container runtime docker and the number of nodes that you want to run. Mm, actually, I like to run a rocket, not docker, but maybe you, uh, you have heard uh, yesterday of the uh, talk by Yago, my colleague. So he already presented uh, the cube spawn with the rocker. So I'm going to just run Docker this time. So I run it. Then simply this configuration is automatically generated under our directory. You can see just directly. Then you can see this configuration file, for example. I'm going to look over later. And for each machine, you can see Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, each uh, root of this uh, is created here. So I'm going to just start here. Then um, First, I need to show a script. It's just a simple wrapper for running start command. Then it launches actually systemd and spawn container three times. And after that, on each node, it runs kube adm command. Uh, this is an init command on the master node. Uh, in this phase, it will take uh, one or two minutes. Behind the scene, you can um, see, for example, each machine is running, and IP address is visible in this list command, and you can see, for example, on the master node, Okay, Docker is running. You can see it, but um, I'm going to go there. Yeah, Docker PS commands runs fine. And it will take some time until the API server is actually running. I'm going to look into that. Yeah, it's running. Yes, nodes are 
already ready, then in, uh, outside of the container, you can see the nodes ready and the pause already. Yeah, scheduler is still pending. Maybe it will take take some time. Also, for worker nodes, you can see. Yeah, it's running fine. I'm going to watch it. Yes, every pod is running run right now. So we can just simply deploy. Um, an example uh, part for demo. This is called Sock Shop, and you can just download the demo YAML file from GitHub repository. And for that, I need to create a namespace for the Sock Shop. This is created, and I'm going to apply complete demo file. Yes, it's created, and now it will take some time until the pods are ready. For example, I need to give sock shop in space. Oh, it's really fast. <laughs> it's already running. Then, uh, to confirm that it's actually running as a web service, you can see the IP address. 10.20.79. Oh, sorry. Yes, it's running. Hmm. Some parts are not visible right now, so but yeah, front end is already ready. This is just an example of, about how to launch the cluster, and you can deploy uh, any part you know, you want to run. And I'm going to go back to um, the cluster, and I'm going to stop. Or another nodes. Then you can see no uh, machine is running, so everything is stopped. But stop means just stopping uh, uh, the machine, so the profile you created already remains and is not deleted anywhere. If you want to permanently delete everything under that, then you can just destroy, um, for example. Yes. Mm, okay, you can ignore the comment because it was already removed. So nothing is there can see everything is destroyed. That's all for my demo. So as we already saw, so, uh, our command line interface is uh, composed of these uh, four different commands, create, start, and stop and destroy. This is uh, very basic and intuitive, so you can uh, imagine what does uh, each command mean? For example, create generates the environment for a cluster and stores every persistent uh, information under valid cube spawn and actually start command uh, launches the cluster as we have already seen. And stop is just a wrapper for machine control power off and uh, removing the images. And or destroy is a command for destroying the profiles completely. 
Yes, for example, the cluster definition format is defined under valid queues on default profile. You can see uh, each possible options in this configuration file. This is actually not intended for user to, uh, users to uh, directly modify. Uh, it's auto automatically generated and uh, you don't have to care about the details. There are several integration issues uh, um, while we develop CubeSpawn. Mm. So actually, CubeSpawn is a tool that heavily relies on Kubernetes and actually Kube ADM and Kubelet uh, are core parts of CubeSpawn. So if anything changes in Kubelet or Kube ADM, then we need to change again. Mm, actually, that's one of the pain points. For example, in Kubelet, uh, recently they change, uh, introduced a new option, a fail swap on equal false, uh, which means you, uh, if you have swap enabled in your host, then you cannot run Kubelet, so we, uh, unless you specify this option. This, um, yeah, actually, uh, I think it's not intuitive option, but we don't have n uh, no choice. You, we need to specify it uh, explicitly. Uh, the other thing is Kubernetes version command line option. Um, actually, uh, in the previous version of Kubernetes, the Kubernetes um, version option, only this one was available, but in the recent versions, Kubernetes version, um, <laughs> the second one in Kube, Kube ADM uh, YML file. Um, and in some versions, it was not possible to mix these things. Uh, recently, it was allowed again. So this kind of um, so not, in, not so interesting topics, but yeah, we need to deal with it. Another thing is about the machine D. Actually, uh, machine system the machine D um, heavily makes use of ButterFS for storage pool. For example, if your host file system is X4, then uh, the system the machine D automatically creates a valid machines that raw file as a uh, storage pool file, which is mounted as a loopback file system. Then Inside that storage pool, uh, ButterFS file system is automatically created. And this is just done automatically. Um, in most cases, it's working. But sometimes, after downloading and extracting OS images, a ButterFS file system becomes just full. Um, actually, I have uh, no idea about how to uh, deal with this problem ideally, so we just uh, decided to enlarge the storage pool 20% um, more to the space, but it's not actually ideal. Yeah, this is uh, a topic that belongs to our to-do list. Another thing is, so you, uh, Initially, run the cluster. Uh, then, you know, each container has a free space of one, uh, several hundred megabytes. This is actually uh, determined by container Linux, but um, it's not much free space. So, if you deploy Kubernetes apps more and more, then file partition becomes full easily. So to uh, resolve these issues, we uh, had to mount a host directory from the host to uh, inside co uh, containers. Mm. Actually, if it's Docker runtime, uh, valid Docker is create, uh, mounted from the host. It's working right now, but mm, yeah, mm, it's actually not uh, that beautiful solution. 
yeah, we need to think about uh, that in the future. And in the container Linux, um, socket utility is not included. That's actually intended. Uh, container Linux uh, aims to minimize the size of uh, each image. So uh, socket is not there. We uh, had a problem with kubelet port forward uh, functionality because that requires socket utility. So as a workaround, we downloaded uh, the, the static binary to be inserted into each container. But um, we already had to check uh, for versions and uh, checksums. So these uh, functionalities are still missing. We have a pending PR uh, written by our colleague Michal, but yeah, it's uh, still not merged right now. Yes, as the last uh, information about the links, uh, we already have an open source project GitHub on the GitHub, so you can visit and file an issue if you have any issue. And uh, in August, uh, we released uh, 0 0.1, but that's actually um, rewritten. So maybe in a couple of uh, weeks, we, we will release uh, a next version, 0 0.2. So you can see the branch directly also. And yeah, we already wrote a blog post on our website. So you, know, you can read it and you can watch the video on the blog post. That's it. Thank you very much.